Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, I am so honored that Russ agreed to allow me to perform. Allow. Yes, allow. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be in your space, and I want you to know that. Um, and this month is Black History Month, and I have some favorite poets that I wanted to share with you. Plus, I want to share two pieces of my own um, that I wrote. One piece I wrote last year and one piece I wrote especially for this night. So um, two of my favorite poets, one that influenced me as a child growing up, um, his name is Langston Hughes. <laughs> this one is called As I Grew Older. It was a long time ago. I have almost forgotten my dream, but it was there then in front of me, bright like a sun, my dream. And then the wall rose, rose slowly, slowly between me and my dream, rose into it, until it touched the sky, the wall, shadow. I am black. I lie down in the shadow, no longer the light of my dream before me. Above me, only the thick wall, only the shadow. My hands, my dark hands, break through the wall. Find my dream. Help me to shatter this darkness, to smash this night, to break this shadow into a thousand lights of sun, into a thousand whirling dreams of sun. Okay. This... Um, I don't know if y'all realize this, but Langston Hughes was kind of funny also. <laughs> this poem is called 5050. I'm all alone in this world, she said. Ain't got nobody to share my bed. Ain't got nobody to hold my hand. The truth of the matter, I got no man. Big boy opened his mouth and said, trouble with you is you ain't got no head. If you had a head and used your mind, you could have me with you all the time. She answered, babe, what must I do? He said, share your bed and your money too. <laughs> this is another one. This is a dream deferred. It's my favorite one. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? Another um, of my favorite poets is Audre Lorde. Audre Lorde was someone, um, when I was studying um, feminist theory, she highly influenced a lot of my perspective. And so this is a poem that Audre wrote for her lover. It's called The Love Poem. Speak, speak earth and bless me with what is richest. Make sky flow honey out of my hips. Regis mountains spread over a valley carved out by the mouth of rain. And I knew when I entered her, I was high wind in her forest hollow, fingers whispering sound. Honey flowed from the split cup, impaled on a lance of tongues, on the tips of her breast, on her navel, and my breath hollowing into her entrances through lungs of pain. Greedy as herring gulls or a child, <clears throat> I swing out over the earth over and over again. I wish I was with Audra, but hey. Uh, and this is um, the poem that I wrote last year. I wrote a series of poems about relationships. This one is called Lover. I heard of you. I never wanted to meet you. You were a mystery. You are a part of many histories. You were rumored to have been a lover of many. You were touched by infamy. I did not desire to demystify your existence. I did not want to succumb to your penitence. I witnessed the carnage of fallen lovers that were battle-ridden by your arrogance, disdain, and disregard. Your callous ways and hardened heart. I pledged to dodge your poison dart. I rather dance with, many, with your many friends. Those friends I perceived did not create amends. Happenstance brought us face to face. Whimsical, light, and delicate you appeared. What harm could you bring? It could be a simple fling. With one in hell, I let you in. Let the games begin. I could use many words to describe your impact to my skin. Tingling, shivering, permeating to my tongue. Numbing, engulfing, altering 
to my soul, hardening, damaging, sullying to my mind, blinding, hollowing, failing. I could not see the transformation before me. I was diluted by the grace and not quite yet the disgrace. We could sneak to meet back rooms in the car behind the wall, in the stall. We despised the sunrise. <clears throat> I committed to you forever, regardless of all others. I had forsaken being on time to make that dime. I had forsaken the genetic pool because I let you rule. I had forsaken accountability and chose insensibility. My, my battle cry was fun, however the war was done. This lover I speak of could not reciprocate. This lover was out to take. The love I sought was in vain. My lover's name was cocaine. <clears throat> As many of you know, um, I have almost 14 years clean. And so that relationship is pretty, pretty uh, true to form. So this next one is called The Beauty of My Blackness. A lot of times when I write, I write about my journey, the journey that I take to become the woman that I am today. And so this is a journey of evolution into embracing my blackness. Condemned by the tincture of a coat, reluctant to embrace, saddened by the hate, caramelized and internalized the fear, halted in heart, on guard for the assault. Is it my fault? What can I do to impart? I am more than sheer dark. Embarked on a journey, dereliction, destruction, degradation, prostitution, exclusion, disillusion, attempts to anesthetize and benign and be blind. Years to deflate the self-hate. I could not escape. I ran with the wolves I thought were sheep, attempted to be discreet with my deceit. I could no longer belie. The self-loathing was a sty. I learned to float above the dismay. I began to look deep into my eyes, relish the shape of my thighs, juiciness of my texture, richness of my stature. I begin to hone my skills of giving me thrills. I do not have to be full of frills. I embrace my skin and my beauty within. I begin to erupt like an earthquake. I, no longer, I am no longer afraid to shake. You see, I have beauty that is skin deep. I am gloriously dark. I shine with deep passion. I celebrate my creed and I rarely take heed. I encourage you to see the beauty of me. Thank you very much.